Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We're live from the university. Uh, Dr. Boris Korich here. Yeah, come in. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes, you can see. Yes. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> yep. Okay, so welcome to the thesis defense of uh, Arthur Rebaquet. Um, so I will explain the, the, the procedure. The procedure is Arthur will present his thesis work and then floor is open for questions from the general audience and after that uh, we basically send the audience away well now it's very easy usually but away from the room um, there will be a non-public defense and after that we'll be calling Arthur and telling his grade and after that there is opportunity to uh, speak to Arthur again <laughs> Um, so without further ado, I would say please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, I see already 13 people following. This is quite amazing. Uh, first time I'm doing this. Um, so the program for today, first, as Boris said, uh, my name is Arthur. I am finishing my master's thesis in information security technology. Uh, I worked with Secura on um, security operation centers. And actually in this room today with me are Dr. Boris Korich, as you saw, and uh, Robert Meppelink, who was my supervisor at Secura. And joining us uh, remotely is uh, Dr. Alexander Rebonik, who gladly accepted to be on the committee a day before the deadline. <laughs> so uh, thank you for this. Uh, okay, so as, as said, uh, I will be presenting the results of my research for about half an hour, and then we'll have an open uh, question session, and I'll explain a bit about how this is going to work later. So, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, first, just the motivations behind the research, uh, talk a bit about cyber attacks and security operation centers in general, and the problem uh, we faced. And then we will dive a bit into the literature and how maturity models and the different areas of research helped us go into uh, security operation center specific research and build a model. Then we will actually talk about what I did. So the development of a security operation center assessment model or SOCAM, hence the title. Uh, we will talk a bit about the evaluation of this solution, and finally, I uh, will uh, just talk a bit about you know, what went well, what didn't, uh, what could be done in the future about this model. So, let's start simply with uh, cyber attacks. You all are familiar with these, they're very common these days, and actually, if you uh, trust the Dutch Bureau for Statistics, about 22% of Dutch individuals were victims of cyber attacks in 2019, which is quite a high number. Uh, and if you look at the US, for example, the FBI reports over 2,000 complaints uh, per day. And just looking at the last month, for example, you, can, you all have heard of the pipeline uh, attack in the US, who, which basically cut supply to uh, gasoline for about a week, and where the company actually paid the, the hackers. Uh, and even right after that, another ransomware attack uh, on a meat factory in the US. So what we see is that spending on information security is increasing, obviously, and actually nearly doubled in five years. Uh, and part of this can be explained about by how much a tax cost. Uh, just in the US since 2016, for example, uh, attack, um, victims have paid about 13.3 billion to resolve tax. Uh, that, that number is absolutely crazy. And if you actually look at the average cost per attack for small companies, it's about 24,000. But for large companies, it can go up to $500,000 per attack. So how do we deal with these attacks? Uh, do nothing, probably not the best situation or best solution. Or uh, do we prepare? And what we've been seeing in more recent years uh, is that there is deployments of uh, security operation centers or SOCs. So what are these? Uh, simply said, they're a 24 hour uh, monitoring system that 
centralizes everything related to security within a company or, or an organization. Uh, they monitor everything on the network or even physical locations, and they report every single uh, important detection or event to uh, the CEO if, if needed. Uh, and they're usually very well uh, established, so you have a hierarchy in place where you have defined roles, where the analysts, for example, are the ones that are just monitoring the events and trying to understand what's happening. Uh, you also have investigators that try to understand why an attack happened and how to prevent it. You also have responders that are the people in charge of responding to attacks, et cetera, et cetera. You have more, many, many roles uh, that are very well defined within these SOCs. And uh, usually you see uh, different levels in them where you have the lower level, you know, you will always hear about uh, analyst level one, which is usually the person in charge of seeing what happens on a daily basis. But whenever there is an important event, you can see that uh, they usually transmit um, whatever event, if it's important, to a higher tier analyst, which is more, in general, more experienced and can answer uh, the attack or event better. And the way they work is simply by aggregating the data, usually by means of a SIM or a security information uh, and events management system, which is just a piece of software that aggregates every event that happens on the network or in the, in the SOC in general or in the company. Now we have some problems with these, uh, namely, do, how do we know these SOC actually prevent attacks or how do, do, how do we know they actually work? Uh, does it detect all the threats? Uh, is it missing critical elements? Uh, for example, you know, when you see that there are over 350 new malwares every day, it's easy to imagine that you can miss anything or miss something. Or uh, the other thing is with more with the cloud these days, everything is offered as a service. So how do you know which uh, SOC offering is the best for your company? Uh, and this all comes down to the question, how can we measure uh, the performance of a SOC objectively? So how do we design a solution to this problem? Well, uh, first, there are a couple of requirements here. The first one being accessibility, uh, meaning that you know, if you develop a solution, it needs to be easily understood by people who are actually going to use it. Uh, you can imagine that if you, I don't know, make a piece of software and it takes three weeks to get used to it, no one is actually going to use it. Uh, you have applicability, meaning that if you make a solution that only works for one specific SOC offering, uh, this is not good. You have to have a very general um, solution that you can apply to different SOCs so you can compare them. And finally, precision, because sure, making it generic to be applied to many SOCs is good, but uh, you also want very good results. Uh, that might be a bit difficult to do when you have something that's broadly applied. So, uh, is there actually a solution to this? And that fit all these requirements. And what I've been working on, uh, and that was proposed by Secura, is the development of a maturity model for security operation centers. So, what are these? Uh, they're simply a measurement tool for a specific discipline. And the way they work is you take a discipline, you split it into multiple domains that you further subdivide into subdomains. You answer questions about each of these, and hopefully uh, you can assess all of these and go back up and give a maturity score. And usually these scores are given on a five to six level uh, scale, and uh, they measure your capability to take in information and actually improve uh, every single domain or subdomain that is assessed. So uh, what you see here on the right, for example, is the scale given by the COBIT maturity model, which is one of the most famous ones. Uh, it goes from level zero, which means you are not taking any information to level five, which means every single bit of information you get, you use to improve. And these models are nothing new. Uh, I mean, they've existed for a long, long time. Uh, for example, in the enterprise, you, you know, they're they've been used to assess human resources uh, departments or just the general architecture of your company. And actually in the late 80s to beginning of the 90s, uh, information technology uh, 
maturity models were developed. Again, I already mentioned COVID, which is one of the most famous ones, but uh, Crest or CMM are probably names that are familiar to some of you in the information technology uh, world. And more recently, uh, such as with OISM3, which is an information security maturity model. Uh, yeah, we've seen these models being applied to information security. I believe this one is actually from 2010, so it's a lot more recent. So the idea is use this model to assess your discipline, or in our case, our SOC, and see how high you can get on the, this uh, scale. So now that we know we want to make a maturity model, how do we build one? Uh, and thankfully, there is a lot of literature about the subject. Uh, but I will only focus on two papers here, the two main papers I used. Uh, the first one is understanding the main phases of developing a maturity model. It was made by uh, De Bruyne et al. And the second one was made four years later by uh, Becker et al. called uh, Developing Maturity Models for IT Management. And the decision was made to just follow the first one. A uh, couple of reasons for this. It has fewer steps, and since I only had six months to do research and development, uh, it was easier. And also, uh, it provides very, very detailed examples for each of the steps, which makes it a lot easier for me. So now that we know how to build a model, uh, what, do we what do we put inside? The contents are so very important. And uh, I focus my research on two main areas of interest, uh, namely technical capabilities and human aspects. And technical capabilities are everything from event detection, network inspection, anything that is related to actually monitoring. And for this, uh, the main source was the MITRE ATT&CK framework, which is an open database of uh, techniques and tactics used by attackers. Uh, basically, they provide a lot of attacks and how to uh, respond, them, respond to them and how to handle them. And that helps us understand a bit of the attacker mind and how we can better prepare uh, for these attacks. And since we have a multitude of domains uh, and attack techniques, we can derive the different domains we want to look at in a SOC from these. Uh, when it comes to the human aspects, anything from hiring, management, handling burnouts, or just employees in general uh, was something I looked at. And for these, I had two uh, main sources, a paper by uh, Sundaram, Sundaram Murthy, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, et al. and Mirela et al. Uh, the first one mostly defines the human element as, the, as a human capital. So that is uh, growth, creativity, empowerment, anything that comes from the employees. And they actually look at how management can take advantage of this to try to get the SOC to a better efficiency. Uh, the second one looks actually as a comparison between SOC analysts and people working uh, by, uh, in CCTV uh, places. Uh, that means people that are looking at security footage from cameras. Uh, even though they know that a SOC is a more stressful environment, they can draw some good parallels between them. And that helps us understand what we can do to reduce uh, task engagement or fatigue or burnout even. And the solution both of these papers actually bring up is that if you can automate uh, repeat repetitive tasks, uh, you can better the efficiency of your SOC. And finally, com when it comes to literature, uh, I looked at more SOC-specific literature. And uh, the, the one big paper in this category is the SOC CMM model uh, developed by Van Os in 2016. This is to my knowledge, one of the first uh, maturity models for, uh, for SOCs. And it actually was the starting point of my own uh, model. It takes the SOC, it breaks it down to five levels, uh, five domains, and many more uh, subdomains and with their aspects and questions. And it gives you a result based on a five level scale as most other maturity models do. And this, uh, this paper was actually extended a bit by Erdur in 2019. Uh, and what he did is, you know, it, uh, it noticed that the maturity model is here to help you continuously improve. And he said that, well, if we do this for the discipline, how about we do it for a model too? So take your model and don't treat it as something that you do and it's done once you're over, but rather make the model evolve 
at the, following the technology you implement in your SOC. So all of that said, that brings us to what I have been doing for the past six months. Uh, that is the SOC AM for Security Operations Center assessment model. Uh, on the right here, you have some of the timeline. Uh, I mean, the first three months were mostly dedicated to defining the problem and reading about it. Uh, and then the next two months or month and a half was about development of the model followed by evaluation. Uh, it is a new addition to maturity models for SOX. It was developed, as I said, as part of the research, and it provides results on a six-level scale, basically the same as the SOX MM, except it adds level zero, which means you are not even looking at a specific aspect. And just some numbers here, six domains, 24 subdomains, and 81 questions. Uh, what was the focus of the model? Well, as I said previously, we had the three requirements. So accessibility, how do we make it easy to use? Applicability, how do we make it work on a lot of different socks? And precision, how do we make the result it generates good enough? So I'll focus on these three, um, on these three points. I'm not gonna dive too much into the model contents because you know, it would be way too long. So for accessibility, uh, well, it's built in Excel. Everyone knows how to use Excel, so that already reduces complexity. Uh, everything is color coded, so every domain has its own color, as you can see, and the results are also color coded according to the same logic. And you can, whenever you look at the model, you know exactly where you are. Also, has a limited number of questions. Uh, a lot of these models are very precise, but when it takes you nine hours for a single aspect, uh, that's too long and that reduces accessibility. Uh, and actually, it also provides pre-planned answers, uh, which you can use. Uh, that also reduces uh, the, the complexity of the model. You can imagine that if you have to, be, to come up with you know, six different answers for each question, it also takes a lot of time. And finally, uh, as part of the development, uh, we implemented more advanced features. But to maintain the accessibility of the model, they've been made entirely optional, which means that you can just answer the questions and you'll get an answer and a maturity level, but you don't have to actually use them. So uh, applicability, how do we target all security operation centers? Well, we do not provide any implementation details in the questions. No notion of software version or what kind of computer you're using or anything like this. That allows us to target you know, a more broad var variety of, uh, of different systems. Uh, and a bit of the more advanced features here, uh, you can disable subdomains or domains entirely, which means whatever answer you put in there do not count toward the final results. Uh, you can also simply give them a higher or lower importance, which basically multiplies, multiplies or divides the, the weight uh, of the results. And finally, when it comes to precision, uh, we still have to keep in mind the accessibility here. So the way the model was devised was, was by uh, what I called a high to low level, level approach to the results, which means that the first result you see is one number, that's your SOC, that's your maturity. But of course, this is not precise enough for most people. Uh, so what you can do is further go into each domain uh, where you can see the result of each subdomain within that domain and how they contribute to that domain uh, grade. And if you want to go even more in detail, you can go down to the subdomain level and here you actually have an answer. Uh, you have the result per answer. You, can, you have a gap analysis made, uh, but this is already way more advanced and uh, that reduces accessibility. But again, it is fully optional. So that balances a bit all of these, um, all of these issues. So now that we have a model, we need to evaluate it. And uh, the way this was done is uh, by involving two uh, SOCs that uh, gladly uh, accepted to be part of it. Uh, first one in an academic environment, second one uh, in an information security company. You can already imagine that these two SOCs have uh, different requirements. You, obviously, the, the, the academic uh, institution sees a lot of traffic, many, many users. So it's hard to understand what's happening on the network at all times. Whereas the security company sees fewer traffic, but probably 
more targeted attacks towards it. Um, I had the chance of interviewing two experienced supervisors, or one of them was a SOC analyst, the other one was a SOC manager, so they've been working with these SOCs for a long time. Uh, so they had the, the previous knowledge to actually help me in assessing the, the model. Uh, they were assessed using two slightly different methods. Uh, the academic institution was fully non-guided, which means I transmitted the model via email and uh, without any instruction, and they had to uh, you know, deal with it. <laughs> and uh, the uh, security company uh, was provided with some training, which means I sat down for an hour with the, with the supervisor, uh, answered some questions he had, explained them different model features. So this already gives us a more different, like a more varied uh, evaluation of the model. So let's look at what they said. Uh, first, the positive points. This is a quote from the academic institution. Uh, this is a good way to baseline our current non-maturity, which means uh, they actually took in the model, looked at it, and said, okay, well, we can use it. And actually, what followed in the email is more akin to, we'll use it now and use it again in six months and see how much we improve. And for the um, institution, what we see is that they answered that it would be really useful for them, uh, for most of the companies they, they actually assess. And they, it provides feedback and guidance to them. Um, and actually, yeah, I've heard from, back from the company that they are interesting interested in actually using the model once it's uh, done and released negative points though because not everything can be perfect uh, this is a quote again from the academic institution um, and this relates to more of the advanced features of the model and uh, what we see here is they said that uh, when he said making the result questionable, he was talking about a specific domain that was not applicable to, to the SOC. Uh, and the second part of the, of the quote here is what mattered to me mo most, uh, or was it me not searching enough? This feature is present in the model. You can disable the domain. But since the, they were not given any instruction on how to use it, there might have been some misunderstandings here. So. While these features are optional, uh, they would have been helpful in that situation, and maybe instructions would have, would have been a nice addition. We also had some major problems during the evaluation. Uh, as you might have seen, the conclusions are only drawn from feedback I got by email. Uh, we experienced ma massive delays, which, uh, I mean, the model was submitted around mid-April to these companies, and I only had confirmation that the results will not come about two weeks ago, so very, very late. Uh, and basically what happened is both of the, of the SOCs answered that more time and resources would be needed for a proper maturity evaluation. Uh, you can imagine that with uh, the situation in the world right now, it's a bit complicated to get a grasp of people. Uh, and that's, yeah, maybe budget is not uh, there for this kind of evaluation on a product that's not been tested before. So, uh, what conclusions can we bring from this? Uh, as a reminder, the uh, problem was how to measure the performance of a SOC objectively. And we devised the three requirements of accessibility, applicability, and precision, to which we proposed a maturity model. Again, this is the timeline we used. Uh, first, review the literature then develop the model, and then uh, evaluate it. And now the question comes, is the model I developed, SOCAM, is it a, an actual solution to this problem? And I believe that it is. And this is part because it was built around the requirements, and because the feedback I got both at the end of the evaluation and during the initial development, which was done in multiple cycles with intermittent feedback in the middle, uh, everything came back very positive. So indeed, I do believe that it is a solution. And as you know, some added bonus, I guess, uh, I had positive feedback from the different organizations that they would actually probably use it once it is released to the world. So as a final word here, um, let's just have a bit of, uh, you know, 
overview of what went well and what didn't. What went well? Well, literature review went extremely well. I mean, I spent three months just looking at what exists in the world. Uh, it is very detailed. There's a lot to see. Uh, although the SOC specific literature is a bit scarce, it is very possible to just look at different information security techniques and how you can bring those into a SOC. Uh, the model development actually went very, very well uh, using th three cycles to make the model where the first one was just figuring out the contents and the general look of the model uh, and then have feedback on this, implement more contents related uh, feedback, again have it evaluated etc cetera, etc cetera. means that there was a good balance between development and review of the model uh, and that also bring comes from a good communication that I had both with the company and my supervisors that I could always reach when I had an issue or that also provided a lot of uh, good uh, guidance being the just uh, you know the writing or what should be in the in the model itself and yeah if we come back to the main problem of this research, it was the maturity level results, which were delayed and eventually fell through. So, uh, as a you know, submit like suggestion for further research, what I would say is take this model and try to apply it to a lot more SOGs than just two. Get more results, compare these results, and that way you could have uh, actual evaluation of the model that's more grounded in the reality of different SOCs. I would like to thank you all for uh, the attention. Uh, thank you for following the live stream. Uh, I see there's quite a lot of people in here. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, right after the presentation, but first I want to thank some people. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Dr. Robert Mepling here that uh, offered me the possibility to do this research at Secura even uh, during the second lockdown in the Netherlands here. I uh, also would like to thank my uh, supervisor from the university, Dr. Boris Koric here, uh, which was always available and we had very regular contacts. Uh, also, Dr. Alexander Trebonik, who isn't here but is joining remotely uh, for you know joining the committee at the very last minute. Uh, and yeah, all my friends here in the Netherlands uh, or abroad that you know followed me uh, during the last six months and even more. And if you'll literally pardon my French, uh, j'aimerais beaucoup remercier la famille parce que ça fait six ans que j'ai déménagé aux Pays-Bas. Uh, J'aurais jamais pu faire ça sans votre soutien. Merci, merci, merci beaucoup. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we will jump now into the Q&A session, and uh, you have two ways of joining. You can either ask questions in the live chat where it might be a bit harder for me to read or you can join via zoom there is the qr code here or there's the link in the description keep in mind that if you join you will be heard on stream so if you're not comfortable with that uh, just ask the questions in the in the chat box uh, but again thank you all and i'm you know, eager to see your questions Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we have one person here. Are you here? Yeah, there's some time with it. I see there's someone in the in the thing here, but for some reason I have no sound. Let's see if that works. I definitely have sound, so there is an issue. There's another issue here. Uh, okay. Are you muted by any chance? Okay. Anyone else?
Ah, Alexander is in the chat. Uh, okay. Just a second. Yeah, I know, but he's here, so. Yeah, but uh, no mic, so. Oh, I missed it. Ah, oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, I have a question about SOC operators. Um, uh, I imagine they have a lot of data to look through, but how do they choose what to analyze? That's actually a very, very good question. Um, they have automated tools for this, uh, and usually what they do is define use cases before they deploy the SOC. Uh, you can imagine that some of the attacks are not very important. Uh, some of them are more. It also very much depends on the company you're looking at. Um, so yeah, usually what happens is when you implement a SOC, you do a, a threat analysis, or you look at the different things you think might uh, affect the company and you try to focus your attention on these. And uh, that comes from either specific network inspections or, um, I don't know, we can also just be physical things. There's a lot of different things you can look at. Uh, any other questions? I hope that answered it. Yeah, I know. Chat in two languages. It's always fun. Oh, yeah. Basically, the question is can you implement three Where does the extent that? Okay, just repeating for the audience here. Uh, the question is why is my model an evolution towards the old one, the SOC CMM, and why should you use the new one? Uh, basically, it improves a lot on the ease of use, so that already takes a lot less time to assess. Also, there are some, uh, okay, I'm going to dive a bit into the contents here, but some of the domains uh, were missing, uh, in our opinion, uh, in the old model, especially when it comes to actual implementation of the different security policies. Uh, so the model I have has an extra section about all of these. Uh, yeah, so basically the, the two main things are the ease of use. Also, you have a more, you can either have a, use the model as a self-assessment tool, but you can also use it a second time as an external audit tool, which is not possible in the, in the old model. Uh, a lot of the differences come from more advanced features. But uh, yeah, generally it's easier to use and it has some domains that the old one was not targeting. Yeah, the, the well, I mean, we're still waiting. Yeah, Do I plan on keeping on working on your model? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, and actually, I don't exactly know because, well, as of today, I actually just got an offer from the company I've been working at. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm going to be exactly working on this. I know I've been working on uh, maturity models. 
Uh, I know maybe on some different, not especially related to SOX, but I mean, it is going to be part of it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, hopefully I can keep working on it and actually test it on more SOX and, uh, you know, give a proper evaluation of it. Are there further uh, improvements you'd like to make? Well, yeah, the main one is would be uh, actually assessing it on more socks, and that would give me an actual base on which to evolve. That that, that is the main uh, the main improvement I want to make. Because if I, if I get a, ba a like a, an actual baseline, then you can see what is missing and what improvements you have to make. As of now, it's a bit hard to tell. All right, well, I don't see any more questions, so. All right, okay, well, again, thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll be closing this. Uh, maybe get in touch later for those who want, but uh, yeah, well, going to, we're going now to the, sorry for that, but private part.